I am, of course, Chris Gardner of the Houston Round Ball Review. And joining me, she doesn't need an introduction, but she is the head coach of the Rice Isles Women's Basketball Program, Coach Lindsay Edmonds. How are you? Chris, I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Uh, how are you? I'm doing pretty well. Are you trying? Are you avoiding the raindrops as much as possible? Trying to, trying to, hiding out uh, at gymnastics practice with my daughter uh, for a little bit before I head back uh, to the office. So there is a lunch group that's clearing out uh, from upstairs. So hopefully it gets a little bit more quiet up here. Okay. Well, just really two or th- two or three things I want to ask you about. One, how have the newcomers? adjusted to uh, Rice University, your program and practice, summer sessions, all those things? Yeah, I think everybody has had a great summer, uh, including uh, our two new freshmen, uh, as well as our transfer. Uh, I think everyone fits in incredibly well off the court, uh, but is also showing a lot of promise uh, on the court. And so it's been a tremendous summer but really, really impressed uh, by how how well um, our newbies uh, to the program are doing. It seems like a seamless transition. Uh, we did our team retreat in Galveston, uh, and right away, uh, everyone felt like they had been a part of the program for years. Uh, and so it, it was it was really refreshing, uh, but also makes me really excited for the season. Coach, what year are you going into at Rice? Four. That's so crazy to say. <laughs> I have can't you, believe it. Have you, how have you changed from year one to now as a coach? Um, you know, I'd like to say I'm wiser. I understand a little bit more of what I'm doing. Uh, but every day is a new challenge. Every day is different. Um, uh, some people say that like coaching is, uh, feels like, it feels like Groundhog's Day and every day is the same, but it's, it's not that way. And every day presents a new challenge, uh, something, you know, a new question that I've never been asked before, uh, a new conversation with a recruiter, or recruits family. So, you know, I think I'm continuing to grow. I'm continuing to evolve. Uh, I think the program has obviously changed a ton. We, we went from a very small roster uh, to a very deep roster, uh, and this is the the deepest uh, and the oldest uh, and the most veteran we've been since I've been here, obviously, and um, that's exciting uh, and challenging uh, and rewarding all at the same time, too. So, um, you know, I, I've definitely grown some, uh, but I know our program's grown a lot. Okay. Uh, it was last week, I think, the conference, the American Athletic Conference announced – the pairings for all the member schools. Let me see if I can pull that up here. Uh, so 18 game conference schedule, six opponents playing twice, and then you play six others just once. Your thoughts on the 18 game league schedule and who you're going to face twice this coming season in conference play? Yeah, you know, there's a lot of coaches in our conference that want us to only play 16 games so that they can get more non-conference games. Uh, and I don't know how they, I don't know how they do that. Like we, we have a really hard time uh, getting non-conference opponents, uh, in particular, to to come to Rice and to to come to Houston and, and play us. Uh, and so the challenge of like adding even more non-conference games, I want no parts of. So I, I'm really happy with the 18. Uh, game conference slate. Um, this year's six opponents are very different than last year's uh, six opponents. And I, I think our formatting changed a little bit on how they broke it up and, and how they decided um, who is playing who and who are the two time opponents and who are the single time game opponents. Uh, so that was a little bit of a change for us this year. And so we're trying out something new. So we'll see how that goes. Obviously, last year, um, we all kind of beat up on each other all season long uh, and no one, you know, I think with the exception of North Texas uh, and Tulsa had a tremendous uh, regular season mm-hmm. uh, conference uh, record. And so I think they decided to, to try something new uh, and try to group it a little bit different. Um, they broke it down by like, I think everyone is supposed to play four to five games against the predicted top three Everyone is supposed to play five to six games against the preseason predicted top six. And then everyone is supposed to play eight to nine games uh, against the preseason predicted bottom four. 
Um, and so that was the new uh, formatting that they decided to go for with this year. Um, and so we see a little bit different uh, two-time opponents uh, for us um, than we did uh, last year. So I'm excited for it. I think it's a great opportunity. Um, I'm excited for the challenge that it's going to present. Uh, but I think our team is, is mostly really excited to uh, get back and, and play and uh, go against uh, the tough American opponents that we'll be facing. I'm going to ask you now about the non-conference schedule. I'll pull it up. I'll get my computer to cooperate for me here. So you, you touched on a little bit moments ago about how difficult it is to put together a non-conference schedule now, especially getting teams to come to to the field house. But here it is, exhibition game against Lubbock Christian in October, and then you start with home games, the first five games. Just your thoughts on the schedule. And, of course, you got a, a trip going to Cancun in November. Yeah, uh, yeah. So just your thoughts about the non-conference schedule overall. Yeah, we're really excited about it. Um, it was a challenge. Uh, we we struggled uh, with being able to compile this this schedule, um, and we're technically I think a game short of what is like the max that you can play. We had a single date that was like still available and just couldn't get it to work out of anyone willing to come and play uh, at our place on that date. And so, but I still think we have a very great schedule. I think we have a challenging schedule. I think we open up, uh, obviously with South Dakota State, they've been a powerhouse uh, nice. in their conference. They've been NCAA appearance after appearance. Uh, their stuff is really hard to guard. And so I think that's going to be a tremendous first game to test us and see where we're at. Um, and hopefully uh, everybody is still remembering uh, that we are the conference champions and they come out and support on opening night. There might be a, a banner reveal. Uh, there might also be a ring ceremony. So it could be a really, really exciting uh, game. Uh, if we can get a big crowd to help us win out that game against South Dakota State, that would be awesome. Um, great friends with uh, the A&T head coach. I've known him for a long time. So pretty awesome to get him to come out this way. Um, and then uh, South Alabama, and we go back, um, we come and play Houston. They come to us this year, and so that's always a fun game. It's always a competitive game. Um, and then Gonzaga on the road is going to obviously be a very uh, tough opponent. Uh, they graduated a lot. I was talking with their head coach uh, this past week when recruiting, and she was like, Coach, you're not even going to recognize our team. Like, we, we're going to look very different. Um, and they were a tremendous team uh, last year. I think once we found our footing, I thought we competed pretty well uh, with them, with the exception of the first, I don't know, six minutes or so is where we really dug ourselves a hole. But after that, we, like, realized, oh, man, we can we can do this. We can hang. We can compete. Uh, so hopefully we have a little bit of confidence because uh, we're going on the road to play them. And then really excited about doing the Cancun Challenge uh, and taking the team somewhere. Um, and being able to play BYU, which we obviously faced a couple years ago in the WNIT, uh, and then playing uh, Vermont uh, as well down there. It's going to be a great experience uh, for our team. Um, and then, obviously, December, uh, we have some games that we're going to be able to fit in in between exams and study days. Uh, and then we go back to Georgia Tech to finish up um, – the non-conference slate before our young ladies go home for Christmas. So I think there's a lot of challenging games on there. I think uh, the travel is going to be different and unique for us. We haven't maybe traveled all the way West Coast and all the way East Coast and also done a Mexico trip since I've been here. So uh, we'll be challenged in those regards as well. But I think it's going to prepare us for the American um, Conference. And we, we want to repeat, uh, but we want to do better in the regular season. And so – uh, but that starts with doing really uh, good in the, the non-conference as well. Coach, you, you're facing, you're going to host the Houston Cougars. You have a freshman on the squad, Anaya Alexis, who I believe her final two choices of school, college, was Houston and Rice. Yeah. She chose Rice, obviously. Just what is it about her? What do you see about her game in high school and, and what do you think she can do for you during her time at Rice? Yeah, I mean, Anaya is a, a tremendous player. Um, you look at her and you're like, there's no way this kid is a freshman. I mean, she, the physique that she has, the presence that she has, the skill set that she has, 
uh, she comes in right away and uh, and brings all of that to our team and to our roster. Uh, we saw the versatility in her from AAU season to high school season. We saw her play a variety of different positions, score in a variety of different ways. Um, but she just ultimately is a Rice kid. She fits in extremely well to our program and to our culture and our family. Uh, she's a very academically driven young lady. Uh, and so Rice was just a, a perfect fit in, in a lot of different regards to her. Um, and we're really excited that she chose us uh, and not uh, the other school in Houston. Uh, no disrespect to them. They're a great program, but she definitely, she makes us better. Uh, and we're excited about that and excited about what she can bring to our team. Almost done with you, Coach Lindsey Edmonds. You kind of touched on it. Is it not yet certain that the season opener at home will be a banner raising and ring ceremony. It's not no, it definitely it? will. I was just kind of okay. being funny with it, but okay. yes, it will definitely be uh, a banner reveal. Uh, and as long as there's nothing, you know, crazy goes on with the rings, uh, they will be in time for us to be presenting them uh, to the players. And we kind of tossed around like, what's the best way to do it, but what better way to do it at our home opener uh, and hopefully draw out more fans uh for uh that big time opener that we have so yeah the, it, it will be a ring ceremony and a banner day with so much depth and so much experience and vets on this year's squad have your expectations risen for this team yeah for sure i mean like i mentioned like we we had a tremendous january and a tremendous march last year uh, but I don't think we lived up to our expectations in some of the other months. And so we, we've talked a lot about consistency. We've talked about how like you really cannot afford to take days off and what a day off uh, at the wrong time can really do to your season and can do to your net ranking and can do to your NCAA tournament seating. And so we're talking more about what all that means. I think, again, they're a veteran group so they can understand it more. Um, but in a game where – you could win by 20. We can't accept just winning by eight. Like we have to put our foot down and keep our foot down so that we do have a better net ranking uh, so that when we hopefully can repeat uh, the conference championship this year, and we're going back to the NCAA tournament, we're not a 14 or a 15 seed. We want to try to get up where we can be an 11 or a 12 seed. Uh, and that way that we're playing on a neutral side against somebody. So we're talking about it more and more. And I think our, this group is the first group that's been mature enough to be able to handle those types of conversations. In your opinion, what is the likelihood of the AAC being a multi-bid league this season? Yeah, you know, uh, last year was the first year that it hasn't been a multi-bid league uh, in conference history for women's basketball. And so that was obviously, I'm sure, a very disappointing year for the American uh, but none of us helped ourselves uh, the way we needed to, whether it be non-conference or in the regular season. So we got to do a better job as a conference of, of winning some games in the non-conference. But then we got to have some better records uh, in our conference as well. Um, but I think there's a lot of teams that are very talented. I know there's teams that challenge themselves in their schedule that can allow their nets to look the way that uh, it needs to look in order to be a multi-bid league. So I'm hopeful that we get back to at least getting uh, two in. Uh, I, you know, I know that at one point they were getting three in in the UConn days uh, with Central Florida also uh, and South Florida also. Um, and so I don't know if we'll get back to three, but I, I really hope we can at least get back to two for sure. Have you met the new commissioner, Tim Pernetti, yet? I have not met him yet. We did not do a head coaches basketball um, in-person uh, meeting this, this this year. And I think because of the transition with the commissioners. Uh, and so I'm hoping that he'll be around uh, and we'll have the opportunity to meet him at the media day that we'll be having uh, late September, early October. Okay. Lindsay Edmonds, Rice Isles, women's basketball head coach, as always, you're gracious enough to speak with me. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you for having me. And I will see you soon on the court somewhere. It will be here before we know it. So thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your summer uh, and go out. Thank you. Take care, Coach. Thank you.